Magnus Carlsen, the five-time world champion, shocked the entire chess community by announcing his decision to skip the World Chess Championship. Magnus pointed out that he lacks motivation to play the tournament for two major reasons. First, Magnus wanted to compete with a player from the future generation, like Ali Reza, Firuja. Next, Magnus wasn't impressed with the format of the tournament. In this background, Ding Li Jin from China, who came second in the candidates tournament, qualified to play the World Chess Championship against the champion of the candidates, Ian Nipomnishi. In a tightly fought contest, Ding Li Jin was crowned as the new world champion last month. After being recognized as the world champion for a decade, Magnus Carlsen entered the GCT Superbet Rapid as just the world number one FIDE rated player. In the first few rounds, Magnus Carlsen was very lethargic and not at his best, as he scored only two and a half points in the first six rounds with five draws and a loss. Magnus Carlsen even opened the event with b5 in response to Radoslav Wojtaszek's d4 move in the first round, shocking the entire chess community and eventually lost the round. Despite starting poorly by his standards, Magnus Carlsen came back well to lift the title in the 27 round tournament. Today we will analyze Magnus Carlsen's marathon last round game against Jan Krzysztof Duda of Poland. Magnus Carlsen arrived at the board at the last moment, as usual, and took a few seconds to make his first move. Magnus opened with pawn to e4, and Duda responded with a Sicilian variation. In the second move, Duda decided to take the game into a side variation with his pawn to b6. After a few more development moves, Magnus played his knight to d5, attacking the c7 queen. After thinking for a few seconds, Duda played queen to e5, attacking the g5 bishop and e4 pawn together. Generally, queens don't come out quickly to the center of the board in the openings. With his queen to e5 move, there is actually a good chance for Magnus to develop his pieces by attacking the queen, or Magnus can also trap the queen. Magnus saves his bishop and moves it to e3. Now if Duda takes the e4 pawn with his queen, Magnus can play knight to c7 and fork the king and rook. So Duda attacks the center knight by playing pawn to e6. However, Duda overlooked the knight to f3 move. You can see the disappointment clearly visible on Duda's face. Duda has to move his queen away from the diagonal supporting the c7 square. If Duda plays queen to d6, Magnus can play bishop to f4 and then play knight to c7. With no other option available, Duda takes the e4 pawn. Magnus happily plays knight to c7, forking the king and rook, and eventually picks up the rook on a8. With a better position on the board, Magnus immediately offers the trade of queens by playing queen to d4. After a move, Magnus tries to open a file to activate the a1 rook. The queens get traded, and Magnus' knight comes to the center of the board to d4. In this position, with a material advantage and good active pieces, Magnus looks to easily win this game. However, they are playing blitz here, so anything can happen. And don't forget, Duda is the current World Cup winner, and he defeated Magnus Carlsen in the semi-final to clinch the title. After a few more moves, Duda plays an active move with his pawn to g5, trying to gain some space advantage on the king's side and activate his f8 bishop via bishop to g7. After bringing his bishop and rook into the game, Duda trades one of his knights for Magnus b6 bishop and trades the other knight playing d4 with white's b3 knight. With his bishop and rook attacking the b6 pawn, Duda is set to capture the b6 pawn in a couple of moves. Meanwhile, Magnus trades the a8 bishop by playing his bishop to f3. Duda accepts the trade and gives Magnus a doubled pawn on the f-file. In this position, Duda finds a very important move that eventually changes the position in his favor. Kindly pause the video and try to find the critical move on your own. It is not a very tactfully brilliant move, but it helps Duda weaken Magnus' pawn structure and gain positional advantage. I hope you paused the video and found the right answer. Yes, it is pawn to b3, attacking the a2 rook. Now Magnus has to take the b3 pawn, further weakening his pawn structure and allowing another doubled pawn. Magnus takes the b3 pawn and Duda takes the b6 pawn, giving himself a good chance to capture the b3 and b2 pawns in a few moves. Meanwhile, Magnus tries to open the h-file by playing pawn to h4. However, Duda calmly plays h6 to avoid Magnus' idea. Slowly, Duda captures the b3 pawn, targeting the capture of the b2 pawn on the next move. Magnus doesn't care about supporting the pawn and allows Duda to take the b2 pawn. Magnus is happy to play with a rook and two pawns against a bishop and four pawns. However, Duda decides not to capture the b2 pawn as he wants his rook to give himself a good chance to win. Duda tries to improve his position and resists taking the b2 pawn as Magnus offers the pawn a couple more times to simplify the position. After improving his position, Duda finally takes the pawn, trading one of the rooks. With a rook and double pawns against a bishop and four pawns, one can say that Duda is in the driver's seat to win this game. However, stranger things have happened in Magnus Carlsen's games. 
He is an in-game god and can turn the game quickly with just one mistake. Also, both players are down to seconds, so there's a good chance that the 5-time world champion can pull off a draw. Let's see how these top grand masters play under time pressure. Magnus moves his rook around for the next few moves, keeping his king firmly at e2, supporting the f3 pawn, while Duda gradually improves his pawns and moves him to the center. Duda can win this contest, but he has to work hard against a player of Magnus Carlsen's caliber, and given the time pressure, Duda has to find all the perfect moves to secure a win. Duda first trades his g-pawn by pushing it to g4 and trades another pawn by pushing it to e4. Now, after the trades, Duda has a bishop and two pawns, while Magnus has a rook. There is no way Duda is going to lose the game, but Magnus has to find the perfect moves under time pressure to escape with a draw. Magnus keeps his king on e2 and roams around the board with his rook, while Duda slowly brings his pawns together, having strong connected pawns on d5 and e4. Duda has to bring both his pawns to the 6th rank to have any chance of winning this game, while Magnus should try to avoid the advancement of pawns to the 6th rank or be prepared to sacrifice his rook for two pawns when they enter the 6th rank. In the next few moves, Duda successfully brings his pawns to the 5th rank with pawns on d4 and e4. Duda is aiming for the d3 and e3 breakthrough while the 5-time world champion is resisting this possibility by maneuvering his rook strategically. Meanwhile, both players have come down to one second to make their move several times, causing anxiety among chess lovers. The tension is visible as Duda and Magnus battle it out on the board. Duda finally achieves the breakthrough he was aiming for by bringing his king to c4 and pushing Magnus king to d1. However, the five-time world champion resolutely fights hard to prevent the e3 breakthrough. The game continues with both players making precise moves and maneuvering their pieces in the limited time available. The position remains tense, with Duda trying to convert his pawn advantage into a victory, and Magnus defending skillfully, relying on his renowned in-game expertise. After playing for 50 more moves in this tough battle, Duda makes a mistake that allows Magnus to capture the e4 pawn. Recognizing the potential for a draw, both players agree to a draw, and Magnus Carlsen secures the title with this hard-fought game, leaving the room with a big smile on his face. The game between Magnus Carlsen and Jan Shisht of Duda showcases the intense battle and tactical skills of both players, as well as the pressure and time constraints faced in Blitz games. It is an example to Magnus Carlsen's resilience and ability to salvage a draw from a challenging position. Chess enthusiasts and fans of Magnus Carlsen eagerly await his future games and anticipate his continued dominance in the chess world.